God who does great things, he's done great things, he's going to do great things. Come let us worship our king, and come let us bow at his feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. And see how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Yeah. 
been faithful through every storm You'll be faithful forevermore And you have done great things And I know you will do it again Cause your promise is yes and amen You have done great things God, you do great things Assembly of God Online. We are so glad that you chose to worship with us this morning. In just a few moments, we'll hear a message from our lead pastor, Carl Kelleher. We miss you guys, and we look forward to the day that we're going to get to see you again. But until that time, we want to make sure that we stay connected with you. On your screen, there's a web address to our connection card. At some point during the service, type that URL in your browser and fill out as much information as you feel comfortable with to let us know how we can pray for you or assist you during this time. We look forward to seeing you again soon, family.
righteousness, O God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. And where you morning. It's so good to have you here today, wherever you're watching from. Let us know in the comment section below where you are having church today. We are glad that you are part of this service. And here at Trinity, we genuinely believe that giving is a form of worship. If this ministry is a blessing to you, and if you'd like to continue to give your tithes and offerings, you can simply choose any of the methods on the screen. Well, Trinity family, we look forward to seeing and gathering with you again soon. Good morning. I pray that each and every one of you are doing well. I miss each of you more than you will ever know. And I'm anxious for us to get back together very, very soon. And I believe it will be soon. I hope that all of you had a great Easter. Thank God that the tomb was empty. I know we're going through a tough season right now throughout our world. But I can tell you this. God is faithful. This morning I want to talk to you about a very, very important subject, so I encourage you to follow along with me in your Bibles today. And the subject I want to talk to you about today is learning how to let go of life's hurts. For the last year we've been going through the book of Matthew. Around the Easter season we talked about Calvary and then we talked about the resurrection but this morning we will be going back to the book of Matthew and we left off right around Matthew chapter 18. Let me start off by saying that all of us will be hurt at various times in our lives. But the way that we handle our hurts and our disappointments will determine our future. Many of you know that I like sentence sermons, so let me share a few sentence sermons with you this morning. 
Someone said, he that cannot forgive others breaks the bridge over which he himself must pass if he would ever reach heaven. For everyone has a need to be forgiven. Someone else said, forgiveness is not an occasional act, but it's a permanent attitude. Someone else said, to forgive someone is to set a prisoner free and to discover that the real prisoner was you. I want us to see several things today. Number one, have you ever been offended by anyone? Maybe it was a parent, a mom or a dad. Maybe they did something to you. Maybe it was a pastor or a church member. Maybe it was someone that you really trusted with all of your heart, but they hurt you in some way or in some manner. None of us want to be hurt. None of us want to be offended. But I can tell you this, friend. Offenses are a part of life. All of us at one point have been offended by someone, and probably we have offended someone. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke chapter 17, in verse 1. Then he said to the disciples, I like this, It's impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. I have been a follower of Jesus for a long, long time now, and it amazes me how some people handle their hurts. Some people nurse their hurts. Some people curse their hurts. Some people continue to rehearse their hurts over and over and over again. But as followers of Christ, we need to learn how to disperse our hurts. This is probably one of my favorite parables by Jesus because all of us have been hurt by someone. And if we want to grow in our Christian walk, we need to learn the power of forgiveness. Let's look at Matthew chapter 18 today. If you'll turn there with me in your Bibles, I can see this so clearly. Peter came to Jesus and he said, Master, how often should my brother sin against me and I continue to forgive my brother? Does seven times sound like a good number to you? Peter was being very honest with Jesus. He really thought that he was being generous. He said, after he offends me seven times, Jesus, do I have permission to punch his lights out? Listen to the response of Jesus in Matthew chapter 18, starting with verse 22. Jesus told him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. I can almost picture Peter in my mind's eye as his mouth drops open. He looks at Jesus and he says, are you kidding me? Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And Jesus is trying to paint a picture here so his disciples see what he's talking about. He said, one servant owed his master an incredible debt. The Bible said he owed his master 10,000 talents. This was a multi-million dollar debt. It was a debt that this man could never, ever pay back. His master was going to sell him and his family into slavery until he could pay this debt back. Look at Matthew 18, verse 26. The servant, therefore, fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Now picture this. He's pleading for mercy. He's begging for more time. He said, I will pay you back, but it was a debt that he could never pay back. It was beyond his human ability to ever pay this debt back. He said, please forgive me, have mercy, show me a little bit of compassion. The master was willing to forgive the servant who owed him a million dollar debt. Look at Matthew 18 and verse 27. Then the master of the servant was moved with compassion. I like that. 
He released him and he forgave him of the debt. Even though this man owed him an incredible debt that he could never pay back, the master forgave the man of the debt. He had pity on the man. He released the man. He forgave the man of this incredible debt. He said, your debt has been paid for. Your debt has been canceled. He forgave the man. Let me give you the definition of the word forgiveness. It's the act of setting someone free from an obligation to you that is a result of wrong that was done against you. A debt is forgiven when you free your debtor of his obligation to pay you back what they owe you or what you think that they owe you. Forgiveness involves three elements. I like this. Element number one, an injury has occurred. You realize that you have been hurt, you have been injured by someone. You think that they did something to you or against you. Number two, there's a debt is resulting from the injury. You say to yourself, they hurt me, they owe me something. Number three, there has to be a cancellation of the debt. There has to be a cancellation of the debt. The master listened to this pleading man who owed him a multi-million dollar debt and he was moved with compassion, the Bible said. This servant owed him an incredible debt. He was not able to pay his master back. The master had compassion on this man. He showed him mercy. He canceled the debt for this man. This is a picture of each and every one of us. We owe God so much. All of us have sinned and we've fallen short of the glory of God. And, and one day Jesus reached down and he showed us mercy and he showed us compassion. And he forgave each and every one of us. The man who had been forgiven of so much had to be excited. He did not have to go to prison. They were not going to take away now his family and his children. His debt was wiped clean. He had the opportunity to have a brand new start. But this man who had been forgiven of so much did not understand forgiveness. Now I want you to think with me please. He wanted his master to forgive him. He wanted his master to show him mercy. He wanted his master to show him compassion. But he wasn't willing to show mercy and compassion to others. And this is a picture of many of us today. We want God to forgive us, but many times when people hurt us or do things against us, many times we're just like this servant and we're not willing to show them compassion and forgiveness. And some of you may be saying to yourselves right now, but pastor, they do not deserve forgiveness for what they have done to me. They took something from me, pastor. They really hurt me, pastor. They owe me, pastor, for what they have done to me. They have caused me pain in my life, pastor. Please hear me. When you don't forgive someone who has hurt you, you are only really hurting yourselves. I want to say that one more time. When you don't forgive someone who has hurt you, you're really only hurting yourself. I believe that most people who suffer from an unforgiving spirit don't realize that unforgiveness is the root cause of their problem. All they know is they cannot be, stand to be around that certain person. They don't like to be around that person. They don't like to even hear their name mentioned. If we do not learn how to forgive, and I want you to hear me, if you and I do not learn how to forgive because you're going to be hurt, I'm going to be hurt. If we don't learn how to forgive, it will eat your lunch. When a person refuses to forgive someone, 
the message that they send is this. Until I feel like I have been repaid for the wrong that you have done against me, you will never have my acceptance. People who refuse to forgive are people who refuse to cancel the debt. Let me tell you something from personal experience. When you refuse to forgive someone, you are the real loser. Unforgiveness almost destroyed me. I was hurt by someone, and I carried that hurt for 18 years. I would give it to God only to pick it up again. And that, that unforgiveness was eating my lunch. It was destroying my very, very being. Let's look back at Matthew 18. The servant who had been forgiven of so much could not forgive a person who owed him so little. Some of you are saying, that's crazy, Pastor. The man who had been forgiven of a million dollar debt could not forgive someone who owed him a penny ante debt. This is also a picture of many of us. God has forgiven us of so many things. But sometimes we're just like that servant. We can't forgive others that have offended us in some manner. Let's look at Matthew 18 and verse 28. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he laid his hands on him and he took him by the throat saying, pay me what you owe me. This man had been forgiven of a million dollar debt. He could not forgive someone who owed him a penny ante debt. He didn't show him any mercy. He didn't show him any compassion. And he would not even take the time to listen to this man when this man was pleading for mercy, just like he was pleading for mercy. Look at Matthew 18 and verse 29. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Can I ask you a very serious question? How could someone who had been forgiven of so much not be willing to forgive someone who owed him so little. It doesn't make sense to me. But yet it happens on a daily basis. God has forgiven us of so much. God has shown us mercy. God has shown us compassion. None of us deserve the mercy. None of us deserve the compassion. But if we're not careful, we don't always show mercy and compassion to others. What happened to the man who couldn't forgive? What happened to the man who did not show mercy and compassion to the man who owed him a penny any debt? I like this. Word got back to the master. See, when you don't forgive and I don't forgive, word always gets back to the master. How did the master respond to the unforgiving servant? Look at Matthew 18, verses 32 and 33. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant, just as I had pity on you? Look at verse 34. And his master was angry. And delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. Now I want you to picture this in your mind. The master was furious. He called him a wicked, wicked servant. He said, I have forgiven you of an incredible, incredible debt. And you could not forgive someone who owed you a penny any debt. Why weren't you willing to show this man mercy? Why weren't you willing to show this man compassion? I ask myself a question. What happens to us when we do not forgive? Several things. What happens to us when we do not forgive? Number one, it imprisons us. See, when we do not 
let go of life's hurts and life's disappointments, when we don't let go of the things that people do to us, number one, we become a prisoner. Number two, we become the real loser. See, we're, we're holding unforgiveness in our heart. We, we say, I can't forgive that person. You're not hurting that person. You're hurting yourself. Number three, it puts us into bondage. When you and I cannot forgive and let go of our hurts, it only puts us into bondage. And number four, this is a powerful one. It keeps God from being able to forgive us. Friend, that is not my opinion. That is the word of God. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, it says this, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. The next verse, verse 15. But if you do not forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you of your trespasses. And some of you are possibly saying at this time, I can almost hear you. But pastor, they really hurt me. Pastor, they really offended me. Pastor, they did not even say they were sorry. Pastor, they don't deserve to be forgiven. Neither did you. Neither did I. But yet God still forgave us. Why don't we ask him? When we hold on to our hurts, it only hurts us. What happened to the unforgiving servant? Bible said the master put him into prison and he turned him over to the torturers. When we choose to harbor unforgiveness in our hearts, we are the real losers. I love the story of Joseph in the Bible in the Old Testament. It's found in the book of Genesis. He was sold into slavery by his own brothers because they were jealous of him. He was falsely accused of a crime that he did not commit, and he was sent to prison. But he refused to hang on to his hurts. He said to his brothers after he got out of prison, and you've got to realize at this point, he is the second most powerful man in the world at this time. He got out of prison. He's with his brothers that sold him into slavery, and he said to his brothers, what you meant for bad, God meant for good. At this point, he had the power to squash them like a bug. He had the power to make their lives miserable. But he chose to forgive. All of us have been hurt by someone. And friend, it's time that you and I let go of our hurts and give those hurts to God. Forgiveness is an act of the will that involves several steps. Step number one, we've got to realize how much God has forgiven us. I like that. To understand what God has done for us and then refuse to forgive someone is like the wicked servant in the story. We have all been forgiven of so much. None of us deserve to go to heaven. All of us deserve to go to hell because the Bible says all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But when you and I cried out for God's mercy and God's grace, God forgave us. He showed us mercy and he showed us compassion. Number two, we must make up our minds to cancel the debt. Release the person from the debt that we think that they owe us or that offense. This must be a mental and an emotional and sometimes even a physical release. You may want to write their names down on a piece of paper. You might want to write down what they have done to you or what you think they have done to you. And then go to an altar, find a place of prayer and say, God, I give this person to you once and for all. Then I would rip that piece of paper into shreds. I would throw it away or possibly even burn it and say, God, I release them once and for all. Number three, 
we've got to realize that true forgiveness, I like this, takes the grace and the mercy of Almighty God. Forgiveness takes an act of our will. But if you and I are truly going to forgive, we need the help of Almighty God. I personally don't think that we can always do that within our own strength. We have to fall on our face and say, God, if I'm going to forgive them for what they have done to me or what I think they have done to me, God, I need your grace. I need your strength. Help me, Father, to let go of them once and for all. Number four. When we're tempted to pick the offense back up again, realize it's a trick of the enemy to keep us into bondage. Oh, you will be tempted to, to pick that offense back up again because I have done that many, many times. I forgave that person of what they maybe I thought they did to me or what they did to me, and I gave that to God. But if we're not careful, we pick the offense back up again. Don't do that because you'll continue to stay in bondage. Number five. Realize the God that forgave us of our sins lives on the inside of you. Number five, realize the God that forgave us of all of our sins lives on the inside of you. Being a Christian is so much more than repeating a prayer at the altar, signing a card of confession, shaking a preacher's hand, crying a few tears in an altar, you are a brand new creation. You cannot live the Christian life upon your own, but the Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I want to close with this promise from the Bible. I love this Old Testament scripture. It's found in Psalm 19, verse 165. I love this. It says great peace. Not just peace, but great peace have they which love your law, and nothing shall offend them. I want to get to a point in my life, because hurts are part of life. I want to get to a point in my life, and I hope you can get to a point in your life where nothing, nothing offends you. And when an offense comes your way, you just realize, hey, that's a trap of the enemy. I'm not falling into that trap. Before I put a caboose upon this train, I want to ask you a personal question. Is there someone that you need to forgive today? I thank God for the Word of God but it's not enough just to listen to the Word of God. It's not enough to say, hey, I listened to Pastor Carl today when he preached his message, and I thought it was a pretty good message. It's not enough just to hear the Word of God. It's not enough just to say, good message, Pastor. The Bible says the wise builder is the person who not only hears the Word, but he applies what the Word of God tells him to do. This is the person who builds his house up on the rock. If you have been hurt or offended, maybe it was a mom, maybe it was a dad, maybe it was a child, maybe it was an ex-spouse, maybe it was a church member, and you said, they had no right to do what they did to me, Pastor. And I'm not saying what they did was right or wrong. But hurts and offenses are a part of life. And as long as you continue to hold on to that hurt or that offense, you're the real loser. It's hurting you more than it's hurting them. And I want you to take a few moments to, today and say, God, I've been a prisoner for far too long. God, I give this person to you once and for all. You might even find a place where you can make an altar, write their name down, write what they have done to you down on a piece of paper. Maybe it's several offenses, but you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, once and for all, I'm giving this situation to you, and I'll never, ever pick it up again. Release that person from the dead. 
Because when Jesus forgave you of your sins, he released you from the dead. So let's just take a moment to pray. And if you'll pray this prayer with me. Father, today I come before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, you said in your word that hurts and offenses are a part of life. Lord, I know that I have been offended by, by certain individual or maybe certain individuals. And Father, I've been carrying that around in my heart for a long, long time. And God, today I realize that it is only hurting me. Father, right now, as an act of my will, I release them right now. I forgive them right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel the debt. I give them to you once and for all. I don't want to be like the servant that had been forgiven of so much. But he could not forgive someone who owed him a penny any debt. Father, I give that person to you right now in the name of Jesus. I, I set them free in Christ's name. Amen. You know, today, if you are watching us, we're here to serve this community. We love you with the love of the Lord. And if we can help you in any way whatsoever, the phone number of the church is area code 502 863 5233. Let me say that one more time. The church phone number is area code 502 863 5233. I want to say God bless each and every one of you. Don't just listen to the word. Jesus said, if you love me, you're going to obey the word. God bless you. And please share this message with others. Have a blessed day. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us online. We'll meet you back here this Wednesday, April 22nd, and next Sunday, April 26th. And hey, please continue to watch our website and social media to stay informed about what's going on here at Trinity. We want to continue to pray for you this week. So remember to fill out that online connection card. We will see you online this Wednesday.